Hello and welcome to the intro to ChatGPT for custom Playmaker action tutorial. In this video, you're going to be learning a little bit about ChatGPT, how you can use it for your Playmaker projects, and some best practices and other helpful little tips that you can use just in case you get stuck on something and just to generally make the process a little easier. So this is ChatGPT. It's a browser-based chatbot. So you can find it here at chat.openai.com. You're gonna to need to make an account on OpenAI first. It's free, it's quick to set up, but once you're logged in, you're greeted with this interface. It's just this little input text down here. And this is where we're gonna be typing in plain English requests for almost anything, but it's just not guaranteed that all of your requests will be fulfilled. So to give you an example, just so we can kind of jump right into things, write a custom Playmaker action that will change the color of a game object to a random color. Okay, and it says, here's an example of a custom Playmaker action that will well, do that. And you can see that it starts writing our custom action. This is happening in real time. Okay, so we have to wait for this to finish before we can copy the code. But you can see that it's already using the Playmaker namespace and that this the class of the script here is change game object color. So that's going to be the name of the action. And what's crazy is that this is even writing out some tooltip information. So the tooltip for the game object that we want to change the color of, it says the game object whose color will be changed. OK, and it's all done here. What's nice is at the end, it tells you how to use the action. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy this code, this button right here, here in my chat GPT folder in my Playmaker Custom Actions folder. I'm gonna right click, create new C Sharp script. And we're gonna call it change game object color. Okay, and it's spelled just the same way as it is here with the capitalization and everything. I'm gonna double click it to open up that script. And I'm gonna select everything and paste in the script that I just copied. Okay, and going over it really quick, we're just gonna make sure that there's nothing wrong. The tool tip value is is highlighted here just because uh, the namespace should say that we're using Playmaker. So we're going to say, OK, and that gets rid of the problem. So I'm going to save the script. OK, I'm going to take our cube. I'm going to add an FSM to it. And we're going to look for the action change game object color. OK, there it is. Going to draw it. Going to drop this in here. And that's it. It just needs to know which game object it wants to change the color of. So. It's using the owner right now, which means it's just going to be this cube. I'm going to put a wait action in here just so we could see it happen a few times. So it's going to wait one second and then finish and come back and do it again. OK, so it should change every second. And let's see this in action. There we go. So it's changing to a random color every single time. And that just works basically out of the box. The only thing we needed to change was the namespace just so the tooltips could work. But we honestly could have got rid of the tooltips, too. Otherwise, this is a perfectly functioning action. Okay, so that all worked fine. But I want to show you some places where you can kind of hit some snags. Uh, so the first thing is that this phrase right here, write a custom Playmaker action, is how you should start all of your requests. I'm sure there's some other phrases that you can use to, to get perfectly fine results. But I find this is the phrase that's most reliable. Because on occasion, your requests might come out as instructions. I might say something like, Give me a Playmaker action that makes an object change colors. See, and what it's doing here is it's giving me instructions. One possible way to make an object change colors in a Playmaker action is to use a set material color action. This action allows you to specify material, blah, 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 right? So it says when the action is executed, it'll change the material color, which is true. The thing is, when I start requesting more complicated things or requests that aren't covered by the standard actions in Playmaker, the responses it gives me can start to be nonsensical, sometimes incoherent, and just outright impossible. And that's because ChatGPT is a really clever illusion. It's just, it's a lot of word prediction. And because of all the C Sharp script for Playmaker actions on the internet that are publicly available, whether it be through forums or the GitHub repository for the custom actions, it knows a lot about writing Playmaker actions to get a lot done 
pretty confidently, but there's still a lot of blind spots it has. There's still a lot of weak spots. So just keep this in mind how you phrase your requests. Now, once I've started talking to it in this way and say, if I ask it, how else might I do that? When ChatGPT is responding in ways that are just in this body of text that are here in this sort of light gray interface like this, when it's not in a little code frame, you're sort of priming it. You're giving it reason to believe that the way it's been talking to you is the way that you want it to keep talking to you. And the more you do this, you might end up saying, let's try this, write a custom playmaker action that makes the object change colors. And you see now what it's doing is it's giving me those instructions again. Well, it's actually giving me new instructions and it's putting it in these steps here. It's like this might become helpful because it's telling you to add input variables to the action, but you would have to know how to write some C sharp script to, to know how to do that, right? So it's like a game object variable called object called object. You would need to know that the type of object game object variable it's looking for is an FSM game object. There's just a lot of blind spots that are here. And it's like, yeah, you could take this part and copy and paste it in in one section here. But this is giving you a pretty incomplete answer. And you can see that the request I gave it, write a custom playmaker action that makes the game object change colors, is basically what I asked for it before. But the reason it gave me this different answer is because I had been talking to it in a very different way before. So if you ever run into this problem where you're giving it requests and it's giving you these type of answers, or sometimes even without code, it might just be full on giving you answers like this, then Try writing what you wrote before, except first come over here and hit new thread. So hitting new thread or just even refreshing the page will clear everything out and it will, it'll be as if you were talking to it for the first time again. And that way you can come back to write a custom playmaker action that makes the game object change colors. Okay, see, and it's back to writing a script. So just keep that in mind. All right, so I'm just gonna refresh the page and we're gonna start again. Even if you don't know C Sharp, that's fine. I'll show you some of the common mistakes that ChatGPT makes in the C Sharp code that you could change even if you don't know how to write C Sharp. These are just a few really common things that I've noticed personally. So the namespace is one of the main ones, is that if you can't even find your action in the action browser in Unity, like it's not popping up here in your action browser, and in your console, there might be some warning about the C Sharp script then you can come to the C Sharp script here. And the big one is that if it puts in a tooltip and it has some other namespace that it's put, often it's something called like my namespace or something like that. It kind of just makes up a temporary one. Because of this, Unity doesn't know which tooltip to abide by because both Unity Engine and Playmaker use this reference. Okay, so that's why this is underlined here. And since these tooltips are here at the top, we know that it's for games.playmaker. And that's all you need to do. You just need to put it in just like that and see those problems go away. So that's one of the main ones that I've seen. It just leaves out the namespace. This is the namespace you're gonna wanna put for all your actions. Another one is it might not even have Unity Engine up here. It might leave out a lot of namespace stuff up here. So you can always just make sure that you have, at the very least, Hutong Games Playmaker and Unity Engine. Now, another thing I see it running into is that in the method where it does the thing that you've asked it to do, so in this case, to change the material color to some random color, it might not be delineating between two types of variables, one being a playmaker variable and two being the Unity Engine variables. There's a different way of writing out that code in a C Sharp script. Now, again, it's nothing to be intimidated by. It's a very simple thing to fix. I'll show you right now a perfect example of this. So here in this script, we have the game object that we're changing the color, right? And this is the FSM game object. Here in the C Sharp script says FSM owner default, and that's C Sharp script that gives you this value when it's a game object variable that defaults as use owner, but you can also specify it. Now, if I just change this to FSM game object, right, if I save that, so we're not using this get owner default anymore, and I might put something like this, game object. This is a script that ChatGPT might pop out for you. So it breaks right here because this game object variable here is actually an FSM game object. But down here in the method, 
it just it thinks it's just a normal Unity Engine game object. So the way you spot this is just by looking up top at the top of the script where it declares all the variables, you know, whether it says public FSM game object or public FSM int, and then it's like, you know, number of whatever and public FSM array. It's like my array, you know, et cetera, et cetera. At the top of all these custom actions, you're always gonna get these set of variables. But the reason I bring that up is just so you could see that these are all the names of the variables that are for the Playmaker action. And then anything in here that references these need a little extension. So right here, this game object, it can't just be written out as game object because it's an FSM game object. Instead, what you need to do is put dot value, okay? And that's what clears this up now. Now this is not a problem. I'm just gonna get rid of these example variables. This works now that I've said game object dot value. Just to give you another example, maybe in your script there, it makes use of an int. So what it might give you is something like public FSM int called my playmaker int. And then down here, it's trying to do something with that. It might say int my number equals my playmaker int. Okay. But the thing is, this is underlined. And it's like, if you click it, it shows up up here. And you're like, okay, well, that's an FSM int. So the problem is just that you need to add a little dot value to the end of it. And now it's fine. And now it'll just be referencing that. Okay, so that's a really common problem that I've seen in the chat GPT scripts is it forgets to delineate between a Unity Engine variable and an FSM variable. So a lot of the time you could just come down here to the method and put a little dot value or dot values and it'll clear it up. Okay, so I'm just gonna delete this really quick, these parts. Okay, so here's our script. Now what you can do is I can take all this, I can copy it, and then in chat GPT, I'll say, give this action an option to send an event when it's done. Okay, and I'm holding shift and enter so I can just paste it below. So now I'm gonna paste the action, send the message. And it gives me these two little snippets of code. So I could take this, I can copy the code, and let's just put it right after this. And then I can copy this code. And it says to put it in the on enter method. And you can see that this is actually from the original script. So what we could do is this whole chunk is actually right here. So I could just take all this and paste it in. Okay, but I just need to make sure it closes the bracket. So I'm gonna put another close bracket and one more. And it looks like we're good. Okay, so I'm gonna save this. Okay, and we're just gonna gonna make sure it's using the cube. Okay, and now you can see that it has a done event. So I'm not gonna put a wait here anymore. Okay, so I'm gonna delete this transition, this finish transition. Instead, the done event, the new event, we'll just say next, and it'll send that, send to another state. I'll put a wait here, and we'll make it wait, and have it come back. So now when I press play, it still works just as intended, but now it sends an event when the color changing part is, and it relies on that finishing. You know, that's essentially the same thing as putting a little finish transition at the end here. But you can see how we were just able to ask ChatGPT to add this little feature. You know, literally just asking it, give this action an option to send an event once it's done. And it knows how to look through the script and it goes, okay, well, if you want this feature in it, this is where you'd put these things. Another thing that I want to talk about, if I just clear this new thread, is that just because you can ask ChatGPT to make it and that it actually gives you a script doesn't mean the script will be functional. And it doesn't mean that the script is going to be coherent or logical either. It might give you something that functions that Unity will try to run, but still something might not happen. You'd, look at, you'd have to look at the C-sharp code and double check the logic yourself. So what do I mean by that? You can ask it stuff like, write a custom playmaker action that makes the player jump up and down at the same time. Now it's writing an action. While it's writing that, let's just go over why this is impossible. I've asked it to make an action that makes the player jump up and down at the same time. Now, if you're jumping up, you can't be jumping down. It's just impossible. If you're jumping down, you can't be jumping. So what it's gonna do is interpret what you've said 
and try to make something out of that. If we just kind of glance through it here, so okay, yeah, we have the the player here, the jump height, the jump duration, okay, the start time, whether or not it's jumping. Okay, so it looks like it might have just made an action that just makes the player jump. So there's not much to it. It's really just a matter of getting to know the limitations for chat GPT. The thing is, it's a new tool. And as time goes on, things are going to change with how we use the tool, how good it gets, what you can expect out of it as far as the requests you make, how high level or low level the requests are, how functional the script it gives you can kind of depend on how high level or low level the request is. If you just ask it to make an action that makes a game object fly around like an airplane, it might kind of work. I've, I've done that and I've done a test and it works out okay, but it's mostly pretty broken. But I've asked it to make actions that do something simple like switch the value of a game object variable depending on the state of a bool variable. And it worked perfectly. It got it right the first time. Sometimes you just need to finesse it a little bit and choose your words very carefully. Ask it to make a few changes to the thing it just made. So go out there, sign up, see what you could do, see some things that you can crank out and share in the comments the things that you've tried making and what your success has been like. Very curious to know how everyone else is using ChatGPT to make their own custom Playmaker actions. Be sure to check out our other videos to learn all the various features of Playmaker. Links to more learning resources are in the description.